Good morning, and welcome to worship on this beautiful Memorial Day weekend Sunday morning. It's wonderful to have you all with us in this way to worship, and we pray that you're as blessed uh, to worship with us as we are to be able to do this with you this morning. Um, the liturgy for today's worship service is found on our Facebook uh, page, as well as on our website, and you can follow along with it there. We also send out an email with that information on it. Um, we will have communion as part of today's worship service, so if you'd like to share that with us this morning, uh, you'll have time a little bit later in the worship service during the offering to uh, prepare the table if you haven't already done, done so. And if you choose not to commune with us this morning, we do have a blessing that you can uh, receive instead. Uh, now, I'd uh, like to uh, prepare for worship with uh, our gathering hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. We'll be doing two verses of this. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in our baptismal font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is from uh, the book of St. Luke, starting in the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I am sending you what my father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. They worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem overwhelmed with joy. And they were continuously in the temple praising God. This is the gospel of our Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly power, how interesting. Uh, Jesus says that you are to stay in this city until you are furnished with heavenly power. Uh, I wonder what this heavenly power is. What, what is. what does he mean when he says that? As the disciples were standing there and he was talking about this, about uh, uh, all the things that must happen and how their minds were opened up to the scriptures to understand everything in the scriptures. And then they were promised this heavenly power that they would be furnished with, that they would uh, be given, uh, poured out upon them. And they must have been wondering what this heavenly power was. Sometimes I definitely think, okay, I need some of that heavenly power myself right now. I, I need that heavenly power uh, to get through whatever I'm, I'm getting through or to understand or to help, however. I also know that a lot of times in my life and in our lives that uh, we often feel very powerless. We feel like there's situations that we have very little, if any, power at all in. And this situation right now with the stay-at-home orders and the self-quarantine and not knowing when it's going to end, we feel that so same sort of thing. We feel very powerless, not sure what will come next, not sure what will happen. And it is a very powerless feeling, not knowing what we can do, or even knowing the fact that there's nothing that we can do to help our own situation to, uh, to end uh, in a shorter time. Of course, what we are feeling right now is nothing compared to what some people feel in their powerlessness around the world in certain, uh, in certain countries, in certain situations, in certain relationships. My, um, um, many of you know that I like a wide range of different TV shows to watch. And now in this time of um, stay-at-home orders and the self-quarantine that a lot of TV is being watched um, since there's um, uh, you know, little other way to distract our minds uh, from what's going on. Um, but uh, one of the shows that we've been watching, and I'm not recommending it, I'm just saying that, that, that we've been watching um, the show The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, now, it's not for everybody, I know that, um, you know, similar to some of the other shows that uh, are on TV um, that I've watched. But um, the interesting thing about The Handmaid's Tale is that um, it's, uh, it follows a woman whose uh, power is taken away. Uh, power to live her life the way that she wants to, the power over her own body, her own situation, uh, the power over being able to be with her own family. Uh, it's all been taken away from her. And it's sort of, uh, the story sort of progresses along where she tries to take power back however she can. Uh, try to take power back uh, from the people that have taken it from her. Um, but sometimes she's not able to take the power from them, but she tries to take power, whatever power she can within herself, and hold on to that even tighter. Um, for me, this analogy, this metaphor, uh, kind of reminds me that there are two uh, different types of power that we have in the world. Uh, there's one power that um, uh, can enslave, uh, one power that can, um, can exert itself over another, forcing another to do what they want. But then there's another kind of power. And this is another kind of power that frees somebody, empowers those people, frees them to live a full life. One is enslaving uh, to sin, to, to fear, to hate, to death, to the power of the devil. And one that frees and frees people in order to live a full life, empowers them to find love and happiness and joy in their lives. One is about personal gain, which is what we call sin, uh, and this focus on the self and selfishness. Uh, the turned inward nature that uh, stops us being able to see what other people are going through, uh, the way that our taking of power for ourselves can take power away from other people and enslave others, but then also the power that we have over ourselves. When we try to take power in certain areas, we enslave ourselves to our sin, uh, be that uh, the sin of uh, our mind being caught 
in uh, these time loops where we're constantly thinking about our own needs, our own gain, our own selfishness, um, and enslaves us uh, to that. The other kind of power frees us, would hold us down, that would uh, bind us uh, to our sin, uh, frees us from those chains in order to go out and live a good life full of happiness and joy and love. Where we're not enslaved to our own desires, but, in, but are free to love the world as Christ loved the world. Where we can act for the good of others, not just the good of ourselves. Now, the truth is we have all sorts of power in the world and in our lives. But it's how do we use that power? For instance, uh, we have the power right now to be able to stay home, to be able to, to wear a mask, to be able to wash our hands, to be able to, to do these things. And the truth is that we also have the power to go out in the world and not do these things. But that would be reckless, that would be selfish, and that would be uh, not uh, giving life to others, but actually hurting others others and has the potential to hurt others, even if it makes them think differently about themselves. What is the right use of the power that we have in our lives? Sometimes I think that we feel so powerless in our lives that we do things in order to take it back. It's, always not, it's not always good for us when we do these sorts of things. When we, we feel powerless and so we strike out in our lives, uh, we end up hurting other people. Uh, we end up enslaving them or enslaving ourselves, as I said. And we give in to sin in order to feel that power, to feel that possession over ourselves and the things in our lives. I think of uh, the two hairdressers that have been in the news recently that, uh, that worked uh, in the salon that probably shouldn't have been open to begin with, but they knew they had symptoms of the virus, yet they worked anyways and exposed over a hundred of their customers to that. I think of a church in California that defied orders, uh, stay-at-home orders, and met for in-person worship and exposed hundreds of people to the virus because one person decided to go to church even though they had symptoms. This isn't even... Uh, taking into account all the other people that weren't exhibiting symptoms but did have the virus. I even think about another church that defied orders to stay at home and so offended someone in the community that the church was burned down. So their own sin actually prompted the sin of another. People trying to take the power back in an unlawful sort of way, both uh, earthly laws, but also heavenly laws of morally right, caused so much sin to happen in the world. And this is the wrong use of power. This is the kind of power that enslaves others and binds them and ourselves to sin. And that's not heavenly power. That's not the kind of power that we were given by Jesus. And that's not the kind of freedom that we were given by Jesus. Heavenly power is not a feeling of our own power. It's not a feeling of our own abilities and desires and the ways to live that we want to, to live. That's earthly power. Heavenly power is different. Heavenly power looks like this. A change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins. Being able to be preached in Jesus' name to all nations. Being able to witness to these things. Being filled with the Holy Spirit in order to witness to the goodness and grace and love of God. This is heavenly power. It's the power to empower others to live a life of love. To live a life of goodness and grace and mercy. It empowers others to have a life of joy. 
It's the power to uplift others and the power to love others, even when we are not loved in return. The power to rescue the powerless from their downward spiral. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly power is the power to witness in truth and love to the goodness of God. To save and not destroy. Not enslave other people with our own power. But using Jesus' power in order to free others. Now, understanding what true power is and being a witness to Christ's love in the world, this is how we use the power of the Holy Spirit. So I challenge us all in this time to examine our lives, examine the power that we have, the power that we want, to see what power we truly have in our life in order to affect other people for good and thereby be uplifted in our own spirit, in our own freedom, in the power given to us by the Holy Spirit to live our own lives of joy. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in any need with the words, hear our prayer. Living God, you chose us to be our witnesses in the world. We pray for the church in every place and the congregations in our community meeting now at home. Focus our hearts and minds on the ministry and power that we share in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, all creation sings praise to you. You delight in the oceans and in the mountains that are your throne. Teach us humility and respect for our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you rule the heavens and the earth and time itself. Make this a time of justice, peace, and solidarity among all nations and peoples, so that oppression and violence rule no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tender God, we wait with hope for your presence to heal us, bless us, restore us, and give us peace. You know all the names of those who are suffering for whom we pray this day, but we especially pray for Agnes, Alan, Barbara, Bert, Betty Lou, Bob, Debbie, Jackie, Jean, Sandy, and Tova. We pray for those on our prayer list, our shut-in members, and for those whose names we say out loud or in the silence of our hearts now. We pray for those who serve in the military, especially Christopher, JT, Gage, Jared, John, Nate, Robert, Sarah, and Tim. We also pray for all those who remember on this Memorial Day weekend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gentle God, you guide us as we seek wisdom. We pray for teachers, professors, theologians, daycare workers, and all those charged with teaching the young and old, especially in these times of COVID-19. Give them endurance and persistence in their valuable work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Infinite God, your inheritance given to all your saints is your presence in our life and in our death. We remember with thanksgiving the faithful departed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now continue our worship with uh, the offering. I want to remind you that you can give electronically uh, through our website, redeemerjamison.org. Uh, you can also uh, click the donate button on any of the emails that came from uh, the church. Uh, if you've not already done so, please prepare your communion table. 
And now uh, we have a musical offering from our musician, Mr. Jameson Van Horn. gifts, O merciful God, seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet. Behold the risen Christ. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now receive this blessing. Jesus loves you, therefore you are blessed. May you grow in his love. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We will now conclude our worship with three verses of I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Mm -hmm.